Hi, today I'm installing a new OS on my NAS device here. It's actually one of two NAS devices that I, I use in my home office. Uh, the first is a, a Synology box that has um, uh, faster drives installed, I got SSD cache, um, and that's like my primary storage on, on the network um, that, that I use just for everything um, and but then I also have a second one here installed on an older R710 um, and basically from that I, I just put a bunch of uh, 8 terabyte reds in there and with RAID 6 I have about 30 terabytes of usable storage and it's my backup storage um, and so I will use that when I need to just kind of uh, have time machine backups or if I back up servers and uh, or, or I have a backup of all the rest of the servers in here um, And it just it 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 ha handles all that for me um, for the past six months to a year I've been using uh, free NAS on that server, but um, And and for the most part I've liked it. I, I mean, I like that it runs on free BSD um, and I like that it uses ZFS, which is a nice file system. When backing up, I was using rsync um, to pull files from all the servers, and it worked really well for that um, because with ZFS, I can set up incremental backups just by creating a snapshot every day. Um, and it even does automatic snapshotting, um, which is just really nice. You know, I can have a, a daily incremental backup of, of all the servers that I back up to this, this NAS. And um, and it and it worked flawlessly in, in that to, to, to that job, um, but there are some drawbacks that I really didn't like about FreeNAS from the get go. Um, one is that you need to to uh, use like in the R710s, it came with a RAID card um, or a hardware RAID card, but really FreeNAS likes to run on um, an HBA card instead. Um, and so I had to go out and buy that to, in order to have uh, allow FreeNAS to have direct access to uh, the, the drives, um, which wasn't a big deal. I mean, I, I purchased one online, installed it, and, and everything else. Um, the other drawback really was, was that it, it's really resource intensive um, to run, and, and this is related to being ZFS. Um, I have like 24 gigs of RAM in there, which I think is even a little bit low for, for the configuration that I have. Um, and, uh, and, and I mean, it's a, a quad core Xeon chip that, that, I mean, it, it would actually hit the CPU quite, uh, quite a bit when I was actively using it. Um, and so, and, and so that part I, I didn't particularly care for. Um, but the deal breakers were just running into, to issues with running it, um, which I felt like I shouldn't have really run into. Um, the first issue I ran into was uh, was installing or having uh, the boot US, which was on the the USB flash drives. They suggested to install that on a USB flash drive that isn't on a data device, um, and, which makes sense to me. And so I I did that, but it was just having problems. Like after a few weeks of running, it would just randomly freeze up and say something with uh, with the the boot drive not being accessible. Um, and so, but the problem is, is that it doesn't save any logs. You can't uh, view logs from uh, across reboots unless you set up a separate log server and everything else. And it's just like that's uh, that's a pain. I, I don't want to mess with that. Um, and so, so I, I came back and I was just like, okay, what can I do? I, I ended up adding a second flash drive and, and adding the boot on a mirror partition. And that the setup of that is really really straightforward in, in FreeNAS, um, which was nice. Um, and that solved the problem for a little while and, and let me use the, use the server for what I wanted to use it for. Um, but a couple weeks ago I was traveling and uh, the server went offline and I didn't know why and got back in town and checked it out. And uh, and, and, and it had a, it, the box froze and basically had console messages about uh, max proc being exceeded. Um, check the login.conf and so forth. So I've run FreeBSD on the desktop. I, I know my way around FreeBSD. Um, and so I, I checked it out and everything in login.conf was set to unlimited and not, it shouldn't have been a problem. 
Um, and finally, that was just kind of like the last straw. I, I just, uh, it was, it, I, I wasn't going to use it anymore. Um, I tried searching online, and, and best I could find was somebody was just like, I needed to read, uh, Plex was causing the problem, and I, I re, uh, reinstalled Plex. So I'm just like, well, I'm not using it for that. I'm just using it for file serving uh, to run Samba and, and NFS mounts and iSCSI mounts. Um, so, so yeah, like I said, that, that was the last straw, uh, and, uh, and so I'm switching today to just install a, a basic uh, version of Ubuntu server, um, and I'm just going to set that up and, and get it going. Um, again, I mean, it's, I don't have a whole lot of complex setup to do, um, because it's really, I really don't, like, I just use it for file serving. Um, and so I think that's going to hold me off until until I can uh, replace it with uh, another get another Synology box. Um, I just like Synology. Just I, it's like set it and forget it. It just works. It's really easy to configure, and I don't want to waste a bunch of time configuring network storage. That that's just I'd rather be spending my time doing other things. Um, so so yeah, that's uh, that's the plan for right now. Um, and I thought I'd just uh, post this vlog about uh, the configuration change and everything else. So, um, and talking about my experiences with FreeNAS. Um, I know it works really well and a lot of people love it, but it just didn't work out well for me. So, um, that's it for now. Take care.